In this video I'm reviewing the KitchenAid K400 blender, so let's get started. The KitchenAid K400 blender comes with a heavy metal base weighing just over 7 kilos and has a 1200 watt motor. The bottom of the base has a rubber edging all around it to stop it from sliding on the counter. And then underneath the base are the air vents and these built-in handles which make it really easy to pick it up and move it around if you need to. The top of the base has a rubber padding but the motor shaft where the blender jar connects is made from metal. It comes with a 56 ounce jar in a ribbed design with asymmetric blades. The lid has this built-in silicone ring to prevent leaks which I really like because it takes away that additional step of having to remove the ring before washing it separately and then remembering to attach it back again. So I really like this design. The lid has a removable center cap which will need to be locked in before using. On the base is the control dial which has a pulse function, variable speeds from 1 to 5 and pre-programmed recipe settings for ice crush, icy drinks, smoothies and then a self-cleaning cycle. And then there's the LED start stop button. I'm going to start with something simple like almond milk. I've got one cup of almonds soaked in hot water for about 30 to 45 minutes. And what I like to do is peel the skin off first before blending it. I find it's much easier to do it this way than to blend it with the skin on and then having to strain it all out. It just gets really messy and there's more things that you have to use which means that there's more washing and cleaning. So they're really easy to peel. If you soak them in hot water, the almonds will literally just slide out to even pop out of the skin. Once they're all peeled, I'm going to add two cups of water to this one cup of almonds. You can add some vanilla extract if you wanted or any sweetener, but I'm just going to do plain milk. So for this, I'm going to start on speed one, press the start button. After a couple of seconds, increase the speed to five. And I'm just going to let that blend away for about 60 seconds. And I'm going to take the speed back down to 1 for about 10 seconds or so just to reduce some of the bubbles that's generated in there. And take a look at this beautiful creamy almond milk. So pure and so white, just beautiful. If you like foam, this would be great to add to iced coffees. So now do you see the difference peeling the almonds before rather than after? And it was so easy to make, nothing beats homemade. And if you wanted, you could freeze some of this into ice cubes and use it for your smoothies or even ice cream. But be sure to thaw it a little first and I'll show you later in the video why I say this. Okay, add a cup of ice cubes, select the ice crush program, press start and watch how the IntelliSpeed feature kicks in here. The blender runs at optimal speed to start with and then it slows down towards the end. And this took about 30 seconds. Oh wow, look at that crushed ice, so fine, almost like powder. But it was fine once I took it out into a glass. Here you go, look at that beautiful crushed ice. Next I'm going to make a smoothie, starting with a fresh orange cut into one inch cubes. I'm going to add a quarter cup of coconut milk. One cup of frozen mango and about a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Select the smoothie program. Press start. The IntelliSpeed feature will run at high speed to blend everything for about 45 seconds. So 
So since I only used a quarter cup of coconut milk, my smoothie is nice and thick. But if you wanted to have it a little thinner, you could always add a little more liquid. But I prefer my smoothies on the thicker side. So taking a look at it, it did blend everything really well, but I am finding that it's not as smooth. I don't know if you can see the texture here. It's possible it could be because of the mango or I just had a little less liquid in there. But I do wonder if the program needs to run for maybe another 10 seconds, then the texture would be much smoother, I think. Although this is absolutely fine, I'm not complaining. I couldn't feel the texture when I tasted it, but this is just more of an observation. Next, I'll make a chutney recipe. Add one cup of chopped tomatoes. I'm just using cherry tomatoes here because I need to finish these off, but regular Roma tomatoes would be better. Add one onion, two garlic cloves, some coriander, some peppermint leaves, salt to taste and a teaspoon of fresh lime juice. I'll also leave the recipe in the description box. I'm going to pulse these first a couple of times before changing the dial to speed one. And then ramp it up to speed five and blend away until everything is blended well. If you wanted a slightly thicker texture, you could always stop earlier, but I let it run for about 30 seconds. I did add slightly more coriander, so it has turned a little more of a brownish color. But for a more red color, just reduce the amount of the coriander. And the best way to empty out the blender is to scrape everything downwards first using a silicone spatula and into the corner and then pour it all out. And here's your perfect dipping sauce. So quick to make. Another favorite of ours to make is hot sauce. Add about 10 to 12 dried chilies, one garlic clove, a teaspoon of cumin powder, and I started with about 60 mils of water. I'm going to pulse it a couple of times first just to chop it all up. And then I'm going to put it on speed one and quickly increase the speed to five for about 30 seconds. Let's take a look at it. Scrape down all the sides and it needs a little bit more water, I think. So I'll just add about another 10 to 15 mils of water, not too much. Again, starting on speed one and then increasing it to speed five for about 20, 30 seconds. That definitely looks much better. And by the way, be careful not to breathe in all that chili, otherwise you'll be coughing for a little while. So scrape everything down towards the bottom into a corner and then pour it all out. And look at that absolutely beautiful hot sauce. Look at that bright red color. And this is so delicious to have with anything. Hummus is a little tricky to make in the blender, but I'm gonna try and give this one a shot. I'll add in a 30 ounce can of drained chickpeas. I'm going to try to blend these up first, starting on one and then increasing the speed to five. And I will have to stop and scrape the sides down and give it all a good mix before doing the same. Starting on speed one and ramp up to speed five. 
and I did this two times until you have this somewhat of a paste next I'll add in two garlic cloves half a cup of tahini I have a half cup of the chickpea water from the can uh, but I'm just going to add half first half a teaspoon of cumin powder salt to taste and fresh juice from one lime again I'll leave the recipe in the description starting on speed one and then ramping up to speed five again you'll need to do this a couple of times as you can see the blades are trying to pull everything down and it's also building up uh, a lot of air pockets so you're gonna have to stop and give it a mix add a little bit more of the chickpea water I'll help the blender a little bit by mixing it with the spatula Then again, starting on speed one, ramping up to speed five. Add the rest of the water and then run it again so it's blending a lot better this time just remember when making hummus you do need to start and stop the blender a couple of times to scrape down the sides and to get rid of the air pockets and you can see that it's all being pulled towards the blades nicely now so I blend it for about 20-25 seconds And look at that beautiful scoop that all out make a nice little well around the plate sprinkle on some paprika powder add some extra virgin olive oil into the well and add on some chopped parsley I unfortunately don't have any parsley on hand so I'm just going to sprinkle on some coriander and oh this looks so good and it came out so delicious you guys and you know you can use all of these to make your own homemade shawarma by spreading the hummus onto the pita bread this hot sauce is so delicious when it's paired with the hummus add in your cooked chicken some lettuce red onions and put on some of this tomato chutney that I made too yes I know I should have made some garlic sauce but I wasn't intending to make the shawarma the idea just came to me at the end when I realized I had some leftover chicken roll it all up and enjoy whenever you're done blending just fill the jar up halfway add a couple of drops of dish soap select the cleaning cycle and it will clean in less than 15 seconds so the blender is so easy to clean going back to the almond milk that I froze into the ice cubes earlier and I mentioned that they needed to be thawed a little first I was attempting to make ice cream recipe which I found online however it did fail to mention that you should thaw the cubes first a little because they are frozen solid and they're not going to blend which my son and I found out the hard way if you can notice by his reflection here so we decided to just abort this recipe since by then we had both lost our confidence and I didn't want to risk ruining my new blender overall the performance of the blender is great it produces great results my only biggest disappointment is the size and the weight of the motor 
KitchenAid makes the heaviest motors and yes, I know that they are built to last quite a number of years and it's great if you have enough counter space to leave it out all the time. But these days I've just, I've got so many appliances that we use from air fryers to coffee machines that I have to pick and choose what I can leave out on the counter. Otherwise I really do like the design of the blender jar and I do like the pre-programmed functions. So this is my review of the KitchenAid K400 blender. Hopefully I gave you some ideas that you could try out. If you do have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Also, please don't forget to give this video a like and I hope to catch you in my next video.